Hi guys and welcome to Cultonomics. My name is Paul Hanley and today I'm going to be chatting to you about Measures of GDP This video will discuss how we measure the level of economic activity in the macro economy and to do this we're going to discuss a concept called gross domestic product. Gross domestic product in basic terms is the market value of all final goods and services produced within a country in a given time period. So what does this actually mean? Well, the market value is anything bought or sold on the market is included in GDP. So that includes a range of different goods and services, but it doesn't include things that occur in the shadow economy where uh, taxes aren't paid or in the informal economy, which don't have a monetary value. However, it does include things like tangible commodities and tangible goods that we see in front of us here. This would be food and beverages and so on. What it also includes is tangible durable goods. So these would be the outer layer or the outer ring that you can see here. Car, laptop, phones, houses, things of that nature. They're also included in GDP. The final aspect of it relates to GDP comprising of final goods and services. So it does include intermediate products. Uh, another item that it does include, however, is services. So these would be seen as more intangible in nature. Uh, and we see some here, hairdressers, cinema, going to a doctor, dentist, etc. So these are intangible, but most modern economies are comprised mainly of services. So GDP also includes this. And finally, it includes the newer aspect of the economy, which is things that we may consider free, such as Facebook and Google, and they're considered intangible, but someone is paying for these, and digital uh, digital advertisers do indeed pay for these type of services. So overall, what links all these uh, products and services together and how we measure GDP is through money. There are three different ways of measuring GDP. There is number one, the expenditure approach. Um, what this does is it looks at all the different types of spending that occur in an economy. So for example, we have here a grocery store and we have a person buying groceries in that store. They're spending money, obviously, so we can trace out that amount. And when we look at the expenditure approach, what we tend to do is we look at it first from what we just saw, which is the consumption perspective. So this is all the spending by households that go on products. So spending of households on goods and services with the exception of purchases of new houses. So they are excluded. Investment then is usually coming from a firm perspective and that's spending on capital equipment, inventories and structures. And this includes household purchases of new housing. So we put the new housing in here. We have government spending as well. So this is spending by the government on goods and services. And these can include infrastructure projects like road projects, hospitals, schools, etc. We also have in our spending exports. So these are the products that we export over to other countries and they pay for these. So that's money that comes into our country and we add this on to our expenditure approach and we take away imports. So this is the final factor here. When we import products, we are spending money outside of the country. So money leaves the country for these products. And finally, in our identity, what we have is exports are exports minus imports. So we add this in to our GDP figure. And what we can see for Ireland is we see that GDP is made up of exports of about 32%. Consumption is 33%. Investment is about 10%, the smallest component. And government spending is 26%. So that's a break down of spending in the economy. However, it's not the only method or approach to measuring GDP. 
You can also take what we call the output approach. And the output approach is measuring this gross value added of everything that we produce. And that's both tangible products and intangible services. And we try and bring all those together. So it's the sum of value added at each stage of production, where value added is defined as total sales less the value of intermediate inputs into the production process. So that's key that we take out intermediate products. For example, a loaf of bread, we've already calculated for the flour, the intermediate product in that. So we'd exclude that. We just look at the value added when a loaf of bread is baked and produced. Okay, our final method then, method three, is the income approach. Now, the income approach, is looking at it from a perspective of all the incomes that come from production. And we have actually three of them that we're going to look at here. The most obvious one to start off with is from the employee perspective. And from the employee perspective, what we look at is the compensation of employees, in our terminology, wages. So that's going to be a key uh, income approach factor, remuneration of employees. A second one is the profits earned by companies, of firms, and the self-employed. So we can add this into our income. And finally, also the rent of dwellings. So these would be imputed in the case of owner-occupied, and these rents would be added up to that income approach as well. So finally, what we're saying is there's three different ways to measure output in the economy. You can measure through expenditure, through income, or through the output approach as well. I hope you call back to Cultnomics soon. Bye for now.